Hello everyone and welcome back. We are about to pick up where we left off here on the step. About to talk to Yastola, the call. Yastola would see the ether flow once more. We have the requisant consent. Tis time to put Nama's power to use. If the ether flows as planned, all that remains is to have the ironworks engineers do their work at the ruins. Come, let us return to the house of the crooked coin. Saying goodbye to Serena. I would not have the first idea how to awaken such a contraption, let alone control it. But then I'm not an Archon of Charlion. I shall begin at once. You may wish to step back. Did it work? It did. Ether may flow freely to the burn once more. To manipulate ether in such vast quantities is draining to say the least. I shall take it slowly for a while. I do not pretend to understand what you did, Yastola, but you did it. Thanks to you, and Claire of course, we have taken a momentous step towards securing our defenses. Now as much as I believe a rest is in order, we should probably make haste back to the Enclave. Agreed, the others may already have returned from their missions, and I would know how things stand. As would I. Without further ado, then. Well, that was cool. So, we are now ready to put up the barrier to protect the Far East from the Golemal Empire, so that's one less thing to worry about. So now all we have to do is go to Alamigo and have this meeting. Lord Hian is expecting you. May I show you in? Yes. Well, it looks like everyone's here. 
My lord informs me you were instrumental to the success of his mission to the Azim Steppe. Though we hope to make many more allies, we could wish for no better than you and your fellow scions. Wait, wait, no! Oh, I didn't mean to do Alize right now. Oh well. Judging by your triumphant expressions, I take it all went well on the Azim Steppe. Indeed, we have secured a suitable source of energy for the barrier. Good. Tataru and I have commissioned Garland Ironworks to ensure that the fuel generators function as they should. A team of engineers stand ready to set out for the burn at a moment's notice. You need only say the word. I thank you for engaging their services on our behalf. The minimade of the arrangements you may leave to me. Which just leaves the small manner of our alliance. So, Yugiri and Hakaru? How fare you with our neighbors? My lord, all the factions we approached are in agreement that the Empire poses a threat, and many responded positively to talk of an alliance. From Hengashi to Suinosatu, however, we received outright rejections. The former will not break its treaty with the Empire, and the latter will not involve itself in conflict. Just as we expected, then. Well, there is not to be done about it. We must focus on the rest. To each of the nations that were amenable to an alliance, I will personally send a message. And once I have attended to that, I believe we have done everything we can to fortify Doma's defenses, for the time being at least. All of which, all of which means I may leave for the meeting in Alamigo with a lighter heart. Yugiri, Hakuro, if you would be so kind as to hold the forts in my absence. My friends, we could not have achieved so much in so little time without your help. For that, I give you my heartfelt thanks. Till the meeting, then. I took the liberty of asking Thancred to attend as well. He should have arrived in the Alamegan Quarter by now. Then let us not keep him waiting, shall we? Well, of course he should be there. That's where we left him. I knew full well how Hengashi and Suinosatu would respond, yet it did not to lessen the disappointment when they finally stopped evacuating. Are you perchance familiar with Nanxia? It is the region to the south and west of Yangxia, and home to several small nations. Such people well understand the value of an alliance, and thus did many of them re receive our proposal most favorably. As I mentioned, I have messages to write and some few other matters to attend to ere I depart. See you in none, my friend. Great, so... We head back to Alamigo. And now this all-important meeting that we've all been waiting for. Nope, you still can't fly, can you? You can't fly either. There we go. Here we are. It occurs to me this will be the first time I meet the leaders of the Alliance in an official capacity. More stiff greetings, pleasantries, and formalities. Does that sound about right? Let us hope that the coming meeting passes more peaceably than the last. Such gathered in the Alamigo. Oh yes. Just what we need, another primal to be summoned. <laughs> Aw, the Moogle minions are so funny. Yastola has told me all, and I duly told Uriange and Kryl. Kryl in particular was concerned about Alphanod, but I assured her that everything that can be done is being done. She agreed to continue with her own task for the time being, on the condition that I contact her the moment there is any development. So that leaves four of us to attend the council. 
Arnvald is here to assist with security, incidentally, though the poor lad seems altogether too distracted for the task. Another one missing Alphanod, I expect. But it's almost time. As soon as you are ready, present yourself to the guardsmen at the palace entrance. I shan't be far behind. Ah, the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. Welcome to Alumnigo. The Alliance leaders have already arrived. May I show you to the meeting chamber? Upon entering the Royal Palace, we'll have several cutscenes. Okay, so this is going to be good. Mistress Lise, Commander Aldin, it gives me great pleasure to formally welcome the city-state of Alamigo to the Eorzean Alliance. The pleasure is ours, Your Grace. I know I speak for all Alamigans when I say that we are glad of this chance to stand with our comrades of the Alliance. And we, for our part, are glad indeed to be able to welcome friends both old and new. Lord Hien of Dorma, at your service. Pray, accept my heartfelt thanks for your generous invitation. Nay, tis we who must thank you for journeying so far. And would be remiss of me not to acknowledge the part the Scions of the Seventh Dawn have played in bringing all of us together. In times of great unrest, you and yours have been our constant companions, without whom we would not be here. With apologies to Lord Hien and Mistress Alize, it occurs to me that we have not gathered in this way since that fateful day in Uldar. The day I lost my arm and my freedom. As I lay in my cell, Never did I dream that I would one day be given the chance to represent my homeland at this council. I would not even be alive had you not plucked me from the jaws of death. You, Yugiri, and Alfino. Would that the lad could be with us. I too owe my presence here to Alfino. In so many ways. Until such time as he returns, I mean to carry on his good work as best I can. Come, friends. Let us leave the past in the past and turn our eyes to the future. My Lord Hian, pray tell us how things stand in the East. Having heard the rumors of dissent in Garlemald, I dared to dream of a peaceable solution. Hmm. The Empire will not so easily change its ways. If the Garleans have a mind to take back Doma and Alamigo, we'll be hard-pressed to stop them, even with the might of Six Nations. But while we lack the strength to fight the tide, a course may yet present itself, if we read the winds aright. The winds suggest but one course to me. One which leads from the sea unto the river and thence to the source of all our woes. The Asians. Indeed. All here have felt their blighted touch. It was the bringers of chaos who nurtured the Archbishop's tyrannical ambitions. They who bestowed upon him the secrets of summoning, as they have so many others before and since. And while they remain, we shall know no peace. Our objective is clear. The question is how to achieve it. That our enemy parades about in Xenos' skin poses problems in itself, but... ere we get to them, how are we to infiltrate the Empire and get close enough to strike? Why 
While I see the wisdom in targeting the Essians, an assassination attempt on Garlean soil would do little to aid our cause, even were it to succeed. It's time we used our enemy's preferred tactic, subterfuge. You have an idea? Speak your mind, Master Thancred. None here know the enemy better than the Scions, and you may have best of all. Whatever it is you propose, we will give it fair hearing. On that you have my word. Very well, Admiral. My proposal is thus. We dispatch the Shinobi to Imperial territory. There, they sow the rumor that the Crown Prince perished in the Battle for Alamigo, and that the man parading around is in fact a corpse inhabited by a servant of darkness. does have the ring of truth about it. And were the Galleons to learn that their future ruler is a puppet, the Empire would be shaken to the core. But, at the risk of sounding stupid, would they actually believe such an unlikely story? I didn't. Ordinarily not. But prior to his miraculous recovery, rumors of Xenos' death had already begun to circulate around the Empire. Ultimately, however, what the masses believe is not our chief concern. Our true objective is to create an opening for rival factions within Garlemald to exploit. Just as a war of succession erupted in the wake of Empress Solus' death. A war which raged until but recently, plunging the Imperial House into disarray as nephew and uncle grappled for the throne. It is no coincidence that one of Varus's first acts as Emperor was to name Xenos heir apparent, family feuds being so tiresome when armies are involved. Not all welcomed his choice of successor, however. There is no shortage of individuals who aspire to the throne, who would jump at any chance to seize power. The news that Xenos is not only dead, but a puppet to diabolical forces, would be too enticing to ignore. The Empire would not be quick to recover from a second war of succession. I am no stranger to infiltrating Imperial territory. With a team of operatives gathered from among the Alliance's finest, the plan should have a reasonable chance of success. Dorma already has Shinobi in place throughout the provinces. We stand ready to act, and act we must. What say you all? Time for Master Thancri's proposal. We shine a light upon the Asian and test the Empire's unity. Twas his plot that scuttled Doma's negotiations, was it not? Why then, if we can eliminate him, there may yet be a chance for peace. Let us wage this war of subterfuge that we may one day lay down our arms. Gods know we never will while the Asians remain. History must be changed. Ahead looms a calamity. Ahead looms light, expunging all form and life. Twin dooms only you can forestall. Only you. What's the matter? There's... There's... a voice! Spies in our midst! Nay, I sense no such presence. Let Expanse contract. Eon become instant. Throw wide the gates that we may pass.
Is it over? Master Thancred! Twelve for Fend. Bear him to a private chamber. Have every healer make ready. Swiftly! Master Thancred remains in slumber. Though his vital signs appear stable, he's unresponsive. What could have done this? And, and why just him and not the others? I'm afraid we could not identify the cause, my lady. Our examinations revealed no wounds, nor the presence of any poisonous substances. Gods, that only makes it worse. You're to let us know the moment there's any change, all right? Thank you for coming. Knowing Thancred, he would apologize for being otherwise engaged at so crucial a juncture. In gifting us a course of action, Thancred sowed the seed of all that is to follow. We have but to nurture it as best we can. To him, I would say, rest easy, that he may wake to enjoy the fruits of our labors. Now, the matter of the mysterious voice must not be forgotten. Will you tell me exactly what happened? Alizé and I heard a voice in the moments before Thancred collapsed. It was accompanied by a severe headache, as if something were clutching at our minds. Did you experience the same thing? So, in between the voice and the pain, you felt as if you were somewhere else entirely? Your testimony confirms my suspicion. That which you experienced was, I believe, your soul being plucked from your flesh. Called. Called? I myself examined Thancred. Reach out as I may. I could not sense in him the spark of life that is his soul. That Thancred alone was stricken so is likely due to his heightened sensitivity to the effects of ether, a consequence of his prior possession by the Asian La Habrea. The owner of the voice, whoever it may be, reached out to you called your souls, and in so doing, caused you and yours such pain. But if that's true, where exactly are we being called to? I know not. Yet one thing is plain. Whoever waits for you on the other side is possessed of a power unlike any I have ever known. Forgive us, Lys, but may we leave Thancred in your care for a time? As if you had to ask. I may not be a scion anymore, but I'm no less a friend. Don't worry. I'll see to it that Thancred's well looked after. Just focus on solving this mystery, all right? Thank you, Lys. As the Elder Seedseer says, tis no ordinary individual we are dealing with. Nor can we discount the possibility of Asian involvement. Whoever or whatever is behind this, the sooner we find out, the better. Okay, I have no idea what just happened, but I love it. That was fantastic. Never have I encountered such a phenomenon. If this is magic, it is beyond my ken.
Don't worry about Thangrid. I'll send word as soon as possible as there's any change. If the Asians are indeed responsible, we must take steps to protect ourselves. Though I know not how. I just tried to call Uriange on his Link Pearl. He didn't respond, but I dare to hope that he possesses some knowledge we do not. Ah, Uriange, something happened during the meeting. Thancred's collapse. A disembodied voice suddenly started... What? But that's... We should talk about this in person. All right, we'll meet you there. That was Uriange. He heard the voice, too. In Thanalan? Hmm. As we alone were affected at the meeting, I had my suspicions. But the voice also spoke to Uriange. There can be little doubt. The Scions were targeted specifically. By whom and to what end is the question, one to which we must find an answer with all post-haste. With all possible post-haste. Okay, and I think that's a good place to stop for now. We just learned the emote Endure. And where is it? But yeah, we are almost at the end. There's going to be, I think, one more video. So until then, I hope you all enjoy it. And see you soon.